Over the last several months, us at Texas Scorecard here have been reporting heavily on the new phenomenon of drag shows for kids taking place all across the state. But at the center of a lot of that coverage has been my first guest here, Taylor Hansen, an independent journalist who has been undercover covering a lot of these events. Taylor, thank you so much uh, for, for spending a few minutes with us. And, and first off, how did you get involved in going to these drag shows for kids? Well, first off, thank you for having me, Brandon. It's always great to be here. Um, and you know, how I really got involved into, you know, really first going undercover at these shows is, you know, I woke up one day, I was scrolling through Eventbrite. I was actually mm -hmm. looking for, you know, pro-abortion protests at the time to go and cover. And, you know, that's when I, you know, scrolled upon it and it said, drag your kids to pride. So, you know, right at that moment I knew, I was like, okay, mm -hmm. there's gonna be some pretty sexual things around children. You know, it literally says it in the title, drag your kids to pride. So I was like, you know, I, I need to go to this. And that's when I got the idea. You know, I'd gone undercover with Antifa in the past during 2020. And I said, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I went to Goodwill, bought a wig, bought mm -hmm. a dress. Well, it was a, you know, a tutu at the time actually. <laughs> and, you know, I just went. Uh-huh, and that was, you know, that was, I think, the one that really kicked it off. It mm -hmm. kicked off people paying attention to this. That was at uh, Mr. Mister in Dallas, and immediately, as soon as your video, your pictures of what was happening uh, uh, got out there, a lot of people started fighting back. How, I mean, just how shocking was seeing that, that display for children? I mean, it was something like I had never seen before. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, you know, like, like you said, there's a first for everything, and, you know, this was the first where I actually had Blatantly, I mean, I watched the the blatant sexualization of children, mm -hmm. not just on one account or two, but throughout the entire show, it continuously happened again and again and again. So you know, at me, you know, I had covered riots in the past. Uh -huh. I've covered a little bit of everything, but this, I mean, this was a whole new territory essentially. Mm -hmm. And immediately, you had reaction. You know, you have lawmakers coming out saying that uh, the legislature needs to step in and put a stop to this. People also calling on the comptroller, Glenn Hager, mm -hmm. to to go after those businesses. Uh, did you expect that kind of reaction? I mean, initially I didn't, um, but you know, right after, once I had kind of gotten home from the event and mm -hmm. the videos had kind of festered a little bit or so to say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I hopped on social media for the first time and really saw that it was just a massive, you know, blowback, you know, that it had gone not just, you know, viral within the state of Texas, but it had gone nationally viral. And, you know, Tucker Carlson did mm -hmm. it on his show the same night. And you know, at that moment, once you know Fox picked it up and these other uh, news organizations started to pick it up, I, I knew something mm -hmm. you know was happening. That there was a culture shift. That someone had just seen a lot of stuff that they did not like. Mm -hmm. And you've been to these events in Dallas, Roanoke, mm -hmm. Houston, uh, all over the place. Um, what has been? Uh, why do you think these have popped up all of a sudden? It's it's the culture, I would mm -hmm. say. You know, it definitely is. Is you know, I'll quote a Keller ISD teacher from mm -hmm. one of these events: "Is it's a culture war?" Mm -hmm. Is you know, in her own words, this is the LGBTQ crowd really battling it out with the conservative crowd mm -hmm. on you know who dictates what our kids are going to be taught these next few generations. Is they are intentionally exposing children to this uh, time and time again because they want more children to essentially be drag queens. Mm -hmm. They want more children to be you know, identifying with this group because then, I mean, they can't really repopulate themselves, so to say. So they really need to continue to grow their numbers in this way, you know, through grooming mm -hmm. kids. Uh, pushing the envelope even further, you had in Katy, uh, just mm -hmm. outside of Houston, you had a so-called church hosting a drag bingo event. You went undercover um, to what they call their transparency closet. Uh, let's take a, a quick look at that clip. Kids, so when someone goes shopping, they can have as many bags as they like. You set up a time via Facebook or there's something we're just always open. And we leave you alone. Anybody that comes over, leave them alone. Um, generally sorted by men's, women's, but we'll sometimes put things in other sections. Mm -hmm. This has all bras and stuff. We're trying to get more binders and things like that because we're we can't get those used. We can't get underwear used because mm -hmm. it's gross. But that's all like the underclothes. They also, I think it's really cool with the clothes. There's purses. There's hats. We need more hats, right? We have so many hats. He has got a little of everything. She doesn't have hats anymore. Hats anymore. Um, I love them. She's doing well. uh, uh, You want jewelry, darling? Jewelry. I won't say no. <laughs> There's purses, there's, you know, makeup. 
Necklaces, bracelets, rings, and earrings. Yeah. Well, we try to make it as much of a store as possible. Yeah. Because we want to bring into the welcome. The bags are the bags they are because you can go home. Anyone can go home with those bags. And it's like, I went shopping. I went to 